There are certain things on earth that make life possible. We need water to live just as we need the air that we breathe. Have you ever thought about where the air that you breathe comes from? The air that you breathe is dependent on or supported by the existence of trees. Without trees, it would be almost impossible for humans to survive on earth. There are thousands of different kinds of trees in the world. There are towering sequoia trees and tiny dwarf willows. There are noble oak trees and scented pines. They all help to make life possible on this planet. Trees provide us with many things and perform tasks that you might not even be aware of. For example, trees provide us with oxygen to breathe. Trees also take in carbon dioxide through their leaves. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, meaning that if too much of it builds up in Earth's atmosphere, our planet will heat up. Therefore, trees help to manage Earth's climate and keep it livable for us. Tree roots help to fight soil erosion and flooding by holding the soil together and absorbing water from the soil. That means tree roots help hold the soil and ground in place. Finally, we use trees or the wood that comes from trees all over the world for all kinds of things. Can you think of three things that the wood from trees is used for? Let's review the different parts of a tree. Do you remember what the main stem of a tree is called? The main stem of a tree is called the trunk. All the branches of the tree grow out of the trunk. Tree leaves grow on the branches. The roots hold the tree in the ground. They not only hold the tree in the ground, they help to feed the tree too. Roots absorb water and nutrients from the ground. Absorb means to take in, just like a sponge absorbs water. The water and nutrients travel up from the roots through the trunk and into the branches. Do you know why leaves are such an important part of a tree? Leaves are important because they enable the tree to produce food. Tree leaves produce food through photosynthesis, just like the leaves of flowering plants. Another important part of the tree is the outside layer called the bark. The bark protects the tree from outside forces such as heat, cold, insects, and bacteria. Bacteria are very small living things that can cause disease. Trees follow the same life cycle as other plants. Just like that of a flower, a tree's life cycle begins with a seed. Tree seeds can be as large as tennis balls or as tiny as freckles. They come in various shapes and sizes, too. They can be flat, smooth, bumpy, long, or thin. Tree seeds have three main parts. They are the embryo, or egg, the stored food inside the egg, which enables the seed to grow and change, and the seed coat, which eventually falls off. Most seeds are carried away from the parent tree that produced them. Do you remember how seeds are dispersed or spread apart? They are dispersed in various ways. They are carried by animals, people, wind, and water. Wherever they land, they rest in the soil until germination begins. Germination is when a seed begins to grow or sprout. Certain conditions are required for germination to happen. We have learned that in the temperate parts of the world, the seasons affect the life cycle of living things, especially plants. Therefore, when there is enough warmth and direct sunlight as well as water from rain, the seed splits open and germination begins. This usually occurs in spring when there is sufficient warmth and rain. Once germination begins, the seed produces roots that search for groundwater. As they find water, the roots hold fast in the ground and the stem grows up toward the sunlight. Tiny seed leaves open and use the sun and water to make food. The seed has become a seedling or young plant. Seedlings need just the right amount of water, warmth, and sunshine to grow. 
With the right conditions, seedlings develop into young trees with roots, a trunk, branches, and leaves. Young trees are called saplings. Tree saplings are much smaller than mature trees or adult trees. Usually, trees are called saplings when they are between 3 and 15 years of age. A tree sapling's bark is smooth and its trunk is flexible, meaning it can bend more easily than a mature tree can. When something is flexible, it means it can bend or move quite easily. Once a tree is considered mature, it may flower and produce fruits, nuts, or cones. Some trees simply produce seeds. There are two main types of trees, deciduous and evergreen. Deciduous trees shed their leaves. Deciduous trees tend to have wide, flat leaves, whereas evergreen trees tend to have narrow and thin, needle-like leaves. During the cold winter months, deciduous trees shed their leaves and become inactive for the winter, much like hibernating animals do during the winter time. In fact, this is what keeps them alive during the coldest part of the year. To prepare for this time of rest, deciduous trees stop using their leaves to make food, and instead they shed these leaves. Then, during the cold winter months, they save their energy until spring returns. In the spring, they will use their energy to produce new leaves. Evergreen trees, on the other hand, shed and reproduce their leaves throughout the year. So there are green leaves on evergreen trees all year long. The cones of evergreen trees are its flowers. Unlike deciduous trees, evergreen trees do not shed all of their leaves at the end of fall. Instead, they use their leaves to make food all winter. How long does it take a tree to grow to its full size? Well, this depends on a number of things. Different kinds of trees grow at different speeds. In tropical parts of the world, where there is constant intense sunshine and rainfall, a tree can reach maturity or become an adult in 30 years. In colder regions of the world, it can take 100 years or more. The length of a tree's life depends on many things. It will always depend on the tree having enough sunshine and water, but other factors can affect its growth and lifespan too. The condition of the soil in which the tree is growing and diseases such as insect infestations and bacteria can alter the natural lifespan of a tree. An infestation occurs when a large number of something harmful enters an area. Accidents such as fires and natural disasters such as hurricanes and floods can have an effect too. Also, people cut trees down so that they can be used to make a variety of products. When a tree lives for a long time and then dies, it is not totally at the end of its journey. Decomposers like earthworms, bacteria, and fungi take over the dead tree. Fungi are living things such as molds, mushrooms, and yeasts that live on dead or decaying things. Through the decomposition process, they help to slowly break down the tree into a rich nutrient that feeds the soil and enables new tree seeds to grow. And there you have it, the life cycle of a tree.